welcome to this webinar this morning on tests. Online tests is one of our shortest topics, so um, we're, we're unlikely to, to go beyond half an hour on this one this morning. We don't want to stretch things out for the sake of it, we just want to keep the content relevant. So some of you will be very experienced with online tests, having passed them before. Um, some of you may have never have done one. Um, we've had messages from students actually on previous webinars this week saying that they've actually avoided applying for uh, roles where they have to do online tests. So hopefully this webinar will give you some information about what to expect, how to prepare, and then how to, to hopefully pass them and get through to the next stage in the recruitment process. I always think online tests is a really frustrating stage to fail at. And I have a mixed views on, on online tests, but we'll do our best to, to help you. Um, this one fits in with the series there. So this might be the first time that you've joined us on a webinar, or you might have already been with us for the first three that we've already done. So this is the last one on online tests. If you've missed any of the first three there in the series, then you're very welcome to um, check out our YouTube page. The link for that is at the end of this webinar and you'll be able to find the first three topics there. So do, do take a look. This is the last one of online tests. Next week we're doing telephone and video interviews. So join mm. us for that if you're not already signed up. So as always, to get the most out of the webinars, we invite you to be present and participate. So I'm on chat today. So if you've got any questions as we're going through, please do use the chat function rather than the Q&A function. And if you can just set your chat, your, your um, comments or questions to all panelists and attendees, it means that everyone gets to see them and the responses as well. We had a really quiet group on Wednesday, not much chat going on, but we had lots of questions on Monday. So don't be shy. You know, if you've got questions throughout, just ping them in there and I'll do my best to keep on top of them. If not, there will be a little bit of time at the very end to go over any questions at that point. If you set your phone to, to quiet, to mute so that you're not distracted. And finally, just make use of the tools that we've got available. So we have got a slide at the end which lists those tools. But as always, we will also make recommendations that you check out what your career service are doing because they will have some useful resources on this subject. So some brief introductions if you haven't met us yet. I'm Sophie, I'm the MD here at SRS. We work with employers and universities within graduate recruitment. So we design assessment materials for some of the big employers and we also support them with their recruitment. We also work with a number of universities in the UK to run small and large scale assessment centre simulations. I'm also the author of the book From Learner to Earner, which this webinar series is based upon. Helen. Yep, so I'm the University Partnerships Manager for SRS and I work alongside Sophie running employability workshops, webinars and our assessment centre experiences as well. I uh, really hope you find this webinar useful and as Sophie says, uh, please take every opportunity to ask questions and get involved. Thank you. So as always, we're joined by a guest expert and today we have Konica Stones, who is actually one of our own assessors who works with us on our large scale assessment centre simulations. Konica has also worked for a number of large uh, employers and is very experienced and has some great advice to share with you. I'm going to hand over to Helen now, who is running this session today. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so you'll see from the agenda that we're going to look at what types of online tests there are, what to expect and how you can practice. So research from the Institute of Student Employers shows that at least 59% of graduate employers are using these psychometric tests, which are all about the measurement of the mind. They contribute to the overall evaluation of a candidate, providing that objective and measurable data. Now the tests fall into two main categories, those associated with personality or situational judgment tests as they're sometimes called, and those that measure your ability. So let's start by having a look at personality tests. Now, the idea behind these is that it's possible to measure your personality traits by identifying how you would feel, think or behave in a variety of different situations. Because remember, to be good at your job, 
it's not just about having that technical knowledge and intelligence. Your motivation and morals will also have a significant effect on how you perform. And in most cases, these personality tests are used to see if you'll be a good fit for the organisation and their culture. Now, these tests will usually include statements about ways of feeling or acting, and you'll be asked to respond to them. And the number of questions can be anywhere from 50 up to 200. Let's have a look at a couple of examples. So for this particular example, you're being asked to choose one statement that best describes you and one statement that least describes you. As an alternative here, you're being asked to rate how true this statement is in relation to yourself. I get very involved in other people's problems. Is this completely untrue, mostly untrue, equally true and untrue, or completely true? Similar to this, you have situational judgment tests in that they aim to see how you respond to different statements and scenarios. In particular, these types of tests, often called SJTs, will often present you with hypothetical workplace scenarios and a series of multiple choice questions to see how you would act in that situation. You're often judged on both the speed and quality of your answers. And SJTs are aimed at discovering a wide range of skills, such as commercial awareness, or as with all time tests, the ability to work under pressure. So thinking about some top tips for these types of tests, they can be quite difficult to prepare for other than to be aware of the different variations. But there are some, some guiding principles. Stay true to your personality and your values, because this will mean your answers are consistent if you're tested again at a later stage. Also, by trying to guess what the employer is looking for, you might not get the right answers anyway, or the job might not turn out to be a good fit for you. Make sure you answer the questions with an ethical and a professional mindset, taking those questions seriously. And it is very useful sometimes to have that role you're applying for at the back of your mind, have the organisation's behaviours and values in your thoughts as you're doing these tests. Moving on to aptitude tests. Now there are at least 5,000 different variations of this on the market. Some of them contain only one type of question, such as those involving verbal or numerical reasoning, while others are made up of different types. Now, they usually consist of multiple choice questions and are administered under exam conditions where they are strictly timed. So a typical test might allow 30 minutes for approximately 30 questions. And we'll go on to look at some of the different types. So verbal reasoning tests may include questions about spelling, grammar, and your ability to understand analogies and follow detailed written instructions. Employers use them to understand how well you can communicate. And you can see an example here on the screen. Numerical ability tests include questions about basic arithmetic, number sequences, and simple mathematics. In management level tests, you might be presented with charts and graphs for you to interpret the data. Now these questions appear in most general aptitude tests because employers usually want some indication of your ability to use numbers, even if it's not a major part of the job. Abstract reasoning tests have questions that measure your ability to identify the underlying logic of a pattern and then determine the solution. Because abstract reasoning ability is believed to be the best indicator of fluid intelligence and your ability to learn new things quickly, these types of questions are very commonly used. And you've got an example here on the screen, which of the following should be next in the sequence? So as we mentioned, there's lots of different types of aptitude tests, and I'll go on to talk a bit more about some of the others, starting with spatial ability tests. So these include questions that measure your ability to manipulate shapes in two dimensions or to visualise three dimensional objects presented as two dimensional pictures. These questions aren't usually found in general aptitude tests, 
unless the job specifically requires good spatial skills. Fault diagnosis tests are used for selecting technical personnel who need to be able to find and repair faults in electronic or mechanical systems. And this is becoming increasingly important because a lot more modern equipment is relying on these electronic control systems. And so it's the, all about the ability to approach problems logically to find the cause of the fault. Data checking tests measure how quickly and accurately errors can be detected in data and are used to select candidates for clerical and data input jobs. A work sample test may be where a candidate is asked to do a sample of the work that would be required in the role. And it may involve exercises using word processor or spreadsheets, particularly if the job is administrative. Or it may involve giving a presentation or doing an intray exercise if the job's at a management level. And finally, there are some mechanical reasoning tests out there, which are designed to assess your knowledge of physical and mechanical principles. Now, these are usually used to select candidates for jobs in the military, police force or fire service, as well as candidates for many craft, technical and engineering occupations. So how can you prepare for aptitude tests? Firstly, find out as much information as you can about the type of test the organisation is using. This may be available on their website, or you might be able to ask and find out that way. Carefully review the instructions as you should with all tests and exercises. Don't be tempted to cheat, as a lot of employers ask successful candidates to resit the tests when they attend an assessment centre. This way they can assure that scores add up and that the test results are accurate and true. Make sure you complete the tests on your own without help from friends and family, because remember, these tests are about your ability and not someone else's. And finally, practice the different types of tests so that you're prepared and time yourself to recreate the same conditions as the real thing. We're now going to hear some final thoughts from Conica Stones, who have supported a lot of graduate employers with their online recruitment process. Hi there, so I am going to give you some top tips on how you can perform at your best when it comes to online tests. Top tip number one, practice, practice, practice. So you can become familiar with the format and the style of the questioning. Because when you are in that timed test, knowing how a question is presented or laid back will mean that's one less thing to worry about. Top tip number two is when you practice, make sure you do so under timed conditions. You want to get the adrenaline going, get those butterflies going, just so you know how you react under pressure in that online test. Top tip number three is when you practice and when you do the online test, make sure you do so somewhere that's free of distractions, somewhere quiet, somewhere where you're comfortable and somewhere where you don't have your phone on. So make sure that phone is switched off because the last thing you want is for that phone to go beep in the middle of your online test and distract you. My fourth top tip relates to working quickly but accurately. Read the question, look at the answers, pick the one that you feel is right. If you're not sure, don't spend lots of time on one question, move on. You can always come back to it at the end. And my fifth top tip relates more to situational judgment tests or work-based preference assessments. So with these, the best way to approach it is to read the question, have a think, and then answer the question as honestly as you can. The reason for this is the attributes that the employer is looking to assess will be asked through various different questions, worded in various different ways, but assessing the same attributes. So if you answer the question as honestly as you can, your natural working preference will come through. Above all else, be calm. Remember, the employer isn't trying to trip you up. They are simply looking to recruit the right and the best talent for the roles that they have to fill. Thank you there to Konica. Just wanted to finish by looking at game-based assessments, which are the latest addition to online tests. 
So research has shown that gamers use a high degree of cognitive skills while playing video or smartphone games. And therefore a lot of businesses have created versions of these games to provide more reliable tests of these abilities. Now, some of these abilities include problem solving, manipulating new information or creative thinking. Now, there's some big advantages to this type of test. Firstly, it's thought to provide a more engaging and interactive experience for candidates, which brings out your natural strengths. And typically, at the end of the game, you will also get automated and constructive feedback, which provides some very useful insights. It's also been shown that intelligent candidates can often compensate for a lack of work experience by doing really well in these tests, particularly as a number of roles will be based on these fast paced, high tech environments that a lot of these games aim to simulate. So what's involved with these type of assessments? You'll usually be asked to complete a tailored set of fast paced and secure games via an app on your phone or internet browser. Now these games can take a range of different formats, one example I came across uh, was a game aimed at testing resilience, uh, which is a skill we've talked a lot about in previous webinars. So the game had lots of levels that you had to work your way through and you could get really far. But if you failed one level, you had to go right back to the beginning. And the test was actually around how many times you persisted in starting again before you moved on to the next game. I'm going to show you a short video, um, which is actually um, a game created around a fictional business where you have to make quick decisions. In this example, candidates download the assessment and complete up to nine levels with a game like interface. So let's have a look. So that was a short clip there to give you an idea of what a game-based assessment looks like. Uh, moving on to talk about those practice sites and different ways that you can uh, explore the different types of tests. There are lots of useful practice sites out there and we have several there on the screen for you. These websites offer some free tests, but please bear in mind that there are also some packages you have to pay for. Now, in a lot of cases, your career service will already have a platform set up where you can practice these tests and they may already have a relationship uh, with some of these organizations. So your first port of call should be approaching them about the best way to practice these tests. And just remember, you only get one chance at these psychometric tests. So make sure you know what to expect and do as much as you can uh, to prepare yourself. I'm gonna hand you over to Sophie now just to talk through uh, what's coming next in our upcoming webinars. Thanks, Helen. So hopefully you've been able to pull out some points of interest from the content that Helen shared. You can obviously come back and have a look at these slides and go over any of the tests that you are particularly interested in. In terms of what is coming up next week, as I said before, we've got tackling telephone and video interviews. So you can see there we're going to be covering what to expect, common mistakes, and then also how to answer the most challenging questions. The resources for this online test session, Helen's already mentioned them, the career service, definitely go and check out what they can support with. They will have um, hopefully access to tests that you can use. If they don't, uh, then you can use the online test practice websites that we listed on an earlier screen. So definitely go and check those out. There's a link there to the book that the webinar series is based upon. And also we have a link to the article that I've written about psychometric testing, which is in HR Review Magazine. We're a very social bunch. We love to connect with students over on our social channels. We're using the, ha the hashtag LockdownYourCareer, and it's been lovely to be tagged in so many posts already. So uh, feel free to, to give us a follow and to, to tag us. As I mentioned before, we've also got our YouTube channel as well, where you can check out previous webinars. When we finish this webinar, you will be taken to a very short survey. We'd love to hear your feedback and comments on there as well. And hopefully we'll see you on a future webinar. 
We haven't got any um, burning questions. I've got one. Oh, hang on. We've got a couple now, potentially. So just before we finish, if anyone wants to hang on, we'll just deal with some questions. So if anyone has got any questions, feel free to stick them in the chat box there. If you can send them to all panellists and all attendees, it'll save me uh, reading them all out for everyone. So the first one, someone is doing a master's in big data analytics and is asking, asking which tests are most applicable for their course. Now, the tests aren't necessarily applicable to the course, it's going to be applicable to the, the job that you're going for. So if you let us know the kind of jobs that you're going for, we might be able to, to give you a bit of guidance on that. But the tests will definitely be linked to who you're applying to and also who those employers are. Someone else is saying, if you're applying for multiple posts in a company, can you improve your scores from one test to another? I think what you're ooh, I'm not quite sure what you're meaning by that question but I guess if you're applying for different posts within a company there'll be a couple of different things there so potentially you could do one application and indicate that you're interested in a variety of roles in which case you would probably just complete one set of um, tests that, that would then be applied to all of them Otherwise, you might actually have to apply for each role separately and they might actually have different tests depending on the different role. If not, and it's the same test or even if it is different tests, I guess if you're applying again and again, then that is going to, um, to, to give you the chance to, to try it again and, and hopefully improve your scores. But definitely don't use the real ones for your, um, your actual, um, you know, the real thing. Definitely get some practice in before that. Okay, so um, Helen, can you just flick back to the resources page? That's one of the questions that someone's asking. Yeah. Someone's saying, uh, what types are most relevant co for consumer and market knowledge or marketing? Um, I mean, to be honest, a little bit of a cop out, but that not every role type is going to have exactly the same test because it's going to depend on the importance that that company places on certain things. I would say you're probably more likely to come across personality testing or an SJT, a situational judgment test, in particular for something like marketing. Um, where it's schemes or roles where there's lots and lots of applicants, then you're probably more likely to see some of those ability tests as well. So things like the numerical tests, the verbal reasoning tests. But I think for marketing, you should see more, more personality ones. You can do a bit of research and find out what particular companies that you are interested in are doing so at least you've got that knowledge in advance okay someone's saying um, an electrical student looking to apply for graduate placements mainly in renewable companies what kind of test so i guess um in those kind of roles you're going to be going for big big companies they will probably have um ability tests so you would probably come across the uh, numerical and verbal reasoning tests quite likely and also you might well come across personality tests as well it's not uncommon for big employers to have two three or even four kinds of tests in the, in their application process so um that that could well happen Someone's saying, do we host free tests that can be accessed? Unfortunately, we don't have any tests that we can share ourselves on our sites. But if you go back to the, the page that listed the three testing companies, you will find free tests on those pages, definitely on the SHL one. And they are a big supplier of tests for graduate employers. Someone's asking, what kind of tests are most common in civil service jobs? Um, I think in civil service, you're going to see ability tests more often. So numerical and verbal reasoning in the civil service. Okay, well, there was a nice little flurry of, of questions there. So someone's saying, uh, for the MSc in big data, could you give an insight on if technical tests have been conducted before? Um, I don't I don't know related to a degree because it's going to be the job rather than the degree. So if you can have a look at the companies that you're interested in, the jobs they're interested in on the recruitment pages for each company. So on their careers pages, they'll usually have a tab for um, 
graduate jobs and placements in particular, and most of them will list the process, the recruitment process, with an overview of what to expect. Within that, they will tell you, or they should tell you, the types of tests. If they've indicated that there's tests and they haven't said what kind they are, there's no harm in getting in touch with them and just asking them what types of tests there are, and then at least you know then which ones to focus your attentions on in the practice. Okay, well, I think that sums up all of the questions there. Great to see everyone. <laughs> And um, yeah, so someone again, sorry, just one last question there is asking again about whether we host tests. We, so we don't host free tests, but we're recommending that you go onto the page that shows those, those providers that do. And also talk to your career service. Okay, we'll hope to see you next time. Thanks and, very much, guys. Yeah, see you later.